So let's continue topics. So now we're going to move on to interpolation. So I've used this word, and sometimes people have asked, what, what does this word mean? So here's the idea for interpolation. I have a triangle or some other object. I know that it points A, B, and C, red, green, and blue. What is the color at X? How am I going to figure that out? That's what we mean by interpolation. So you've encountered this before. So here's a place where you've probably seen this before. I have some sort of curve. Probably I was taking a pre-calculus or calculus class. And somebody talked about we can approximate this curve and we can interpolate values. So here's a linear interpolation uh, between those values. We could use a higher order polynomial fit to do our interpolation, but let's just consider linear. Um, and we could say we can approximate this function by this linear fit. It's not a very good approximation in this case, but nevertheless, we could approximate. And we could calculate at point t, between the points x2 and x3, right, at some point t, we could say that we're going to interpolate it using this function of the in-between. So this is something that you've probably seen before, how to do a, a single linear interpolate, interpolation. It should look familiar to you. Um, and this formula of if my t position is here, which is some fraction of the distance from x2 to x3, I'm going to use the function at x2 um, times one side of that, 1 minus t. And then I'm going to use the function x3 for t. So as t gets closer to x3, I'm going to use more of the function at x3. And as it gets closer to x2, I'm going to use more of the function at x2, right? Uh, and t is just the weighted distance between these things, right? So here's another way to draw the same thing. Uh, our root question is what value do we want to put in between? So we were talking about linear interpolation. This is what we had on the last slide, right? We're going to draw a line and we're going to say it's going to be some fraction, right? So this is the same math we had on the previous slide. We could have some fraction in between. We could also use, in graphics, we often use something called nearest neighbor. It basically says where we are at, well, we know what it is here. We know what it is here. If you're closer to this one, just say it's that value. If you're closer to this one, just say it's this value. Forget about this average one. Forget about the neighbor. Just pick the nearest neighbor. So this, this is often used in graphics. Right now, we're going to be talking about linear interpolation. We could also have higher order. So we could have a cubic interpolation, which uses multiple known samples, the red, yellow, green, and blue here, and tries to make a guess at what the value of the function should be here at this point. And often, this guess can be better than the linear interpolation. So we're going to talk about linear right now because I think it's something that's simple enough to easy, simple enough to understand and do the math, but is key to doing a lot of graphics processing. Um, and I won't ask you to calculate these cubic things, but we'll talk about some more about it later. So in 1D, it looks like this. This is probably what you've seen in your math classes. In 2D, the pictures get harder to draw. So we can do nearest neighbor, just pick the closest point, and our function's going to have some shape. We can do bilinear, meaning that we're going to fit some surface to the four surrounding points that's a plane, and we're going to get some point on that plane. Or we can do bicubic, we're going to fit some complicated cubic 2D thing and try to get to that point. Here's another picture showing the same thing. I just grabbed several different pictures off of the web because they may be intuitive to people in a different way. So here's just linear interpolation. Here's bilinear interpolation, where you're trying to find the value of the function at this point, given the four corners. You're going to have to calculate it in some way. And how to do that calculation is what we're about to talk about. So this is, I think, intuitive for a lot of people. It's a height field. My function has a value, and I, and I have a height, right? So it, it sort of matches these drawings. I have a, a 1D height. But in graphics, this usually comes up for images. So I don't have a height. I have a color. <laughs> so here I've drawn grayscale images. So I just have one color. I don't have a red, green, and blue stored at each pixel. I just have a single value, 0 to 255, stored at each pixel. And we can shrink our images, right? So it's pretty straightforward. If I have a 640 squared image, if I just average together pairs of two images, I can downsample, 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 until I have a 20, pixel by, 20 by 20 pixel image. And, but I've thrown away data to get here. So suppose I want to go from this small one and I want to get big again. This is a case where bilinear interpolation can help us. So what are we trying to do? We have a smaller image. We're trying to make it bigger. And when we try to make it bigger, we have these gaps. So these are just like the gaps between our samples and the function. We have to fill something in here. What value goes there? 
this is where we're going to use our interpolation. Interpolating means getting the in-between values. I only have samples at these locations. What am I going to put in between? So if we start with a low resolution image and we bump it back up big, so this was the lowest, this was our 20 by 20 image. If we bump it back up big and we choose nearest neighbor, we get blocky things that look like this. This was starting by the 40 to 40. This is the 80 by 80, right? If we are our original size, then it always looks good. So if we start with this low resolution image and try to make it big, I'm sure you've seen this in many programs, in textures, in games, in upsampled images on the web, printed on posters and restaurant walls, this business about these blocks, right? They just use nearest neighbor for their interpolation. If we use bilinear interpolation, we get pictures that look like this. And if we use bicubic, we can get pictures that look like this. Now it's still blurry. Most people consider this to be a better result than, than this. Or maybe if we consider, say, this one, which is not upsampled so strongly, I have weird blocking artifacts. And this somehow looks much cleaner. It's still blurry, but it's somehow cleaner than this. So most people consider this to be better, although it's a, it's a style choice in some sense. So we're about to talk about how to achieve this bilinear interpolation. How does this work? Because it comes up often in graphics. So here's the question. We have a bunch of pixels with known values, and somebody comes and says, what is the, what's the color here? What's the value in this location at the red dot? So what do we have to do? We have to use the four nearest locations, we're going to find out the fractional distance, the offset, in, the, in these directions. So how much is this S? How much is this T as, as a fraction bet between these points? And then we're going to, this LERP is a linear interp interpolation. So we're now going to do a linear interpolation somewhere. So this is just the definition of linear interpolation. This is the same thing we saw in that first slide. So we're first going to linear interpolate and find these helper points. So if we know this fraction s, we can feed it into our linear interpolation function together with the two points surrounding it. And we're going to get this helper point u0. And we're going to do the same thing for u1 uh, in order to get this. And then we're going to do a linear interpolation between these two points to get to here. So now we're using t as the offset direction in, in order to get to this. And we're using the points U0 and U1 in order to get there. Now, why did I go along these sides first instead of doing T first and then doing S? It turns out it doesn't make any difference. So we have this formula. If you plug in the formula into these steps and then simplify out, it doesn't make any difference whether you do this side first or you do this, this side first. So this allows us to calculate what, what this value is by going through these steps. So here's some other pictures. Uh, students always find bilinear interpolation confusing. So this morning I added uh, a bunch of these slides, including these pictures, in order to try to see if I could get something that would help people to understand it. So here's one with colors. I got red and yellow. When I do my interpolation, I get to some in-between orange. My cyan and green, when I interpolate, I get this kind of a little bit more bluish green. And then when I interpolate these, I get some color in the middle. Okay, this is what bilinear interpolation is doing. But how much do I wait? Okay, maybe this color-coded picture is gonna help some people. As I get closer to this yellow dot, I want to have more weight, right? And I'm getting further from this red dot, so I wanna have less weight. So how much weight do, do I wanna have? Okay, so the yellow dot is gonna be weighted by the size of this yellow square and the Blue dot over here is gonna be weighted by the size of this blue square. So as I get further away, that square is gonna shrink and I'm gonna get less weight. And as I get closer to something, my square is gonna get big, I'm gonna get more weight. So this is just a graphical representation of how much weight am I gonna to give to each thing in order to do this interpolation. Here's a picture with some numbers, right? So here, these are rows and columns. We're at pixel 21, pixel 20, pixel 14, and 15. And the values we're gonna interpolate are this 91, 210. 95 and 162. So we're first going to interpolate. So this is halfway between 14 and 15. So we're going to take the value halfway between 210 and 91. And that's going to give us this number here. We're going to take the value halfway between 162 and 95. That's going to give us this number here. And then in this direction, this is 0.2 of the distance. So I'm going to take this number 
and I'm, I'm closer on this side. So I don't want to take times 0.2. I want to take times 0.8, the bigger amount, times this. And then this number times this much, 0.2. So this times 0.8 plus this times 0.2, and it's going to give me this value here. So maybe these pictures are going to help somebody in a way that the little animated sequence didn't in terms of understanding how this bilinear interpolation works. OK, so now we're ready to try to do a poll on this. OK, what do you think? What's the value at A? You didn't get a poll. You guys don't have a poll. That explains why I don't have any answers. Okay, let's try again. How about now? Well, on my sign, Zoom showed me a nice little polling in progress window. Uh, but apparently it didn't show it to you guys. Okay, so rather than breakout rooms, let me um, just see if anybody wants to tell us why. Uh, we're experimenting with different ways. I'll ask you guys later, do breakout rooms work better? Or does everybody together work better? Or what, are, what should we do? But for this one, let's just have somebody tell us, what, what's the value for A and how come? Could I give it a try? Sure. Uh, so the... Top two points would average out to two, right? Or would it? I don't know. Or is it average out to one? And then the bottom point averages out to five. And then. So we're trying to find this point here. Uh huh. You guys see in my annotation. This point here, right? So does that average out to one from zero and four? Yeah, between zero and four, right? So you, so we can just reason this as. You could apply the formula, but you could also say, I've got, you can see my grid lines here, right? So this must be one, two, three, if it's all happening linearly. So that must be one. And then on the bottom, uh, there's two fives. The bottom, so this five. is going to be five because everything's five. Okay, so keep walking us through. Uh, and then so if you average out between the two of those based on distance, you might get a value like two or something? Maybe three. Right. Yeah, you will, right? So here the numbers have all been made to make it nice and easy so you can do it in class, right? But you can see that there's even spacing, one, two, three, four, five, right? So if you went in this direction, then we're going to get A is the value two. Now, you could have the question of what happens if we calculated this point first and then calculated this point and then went in between we're gonna to come to the same value if we do that. It's not gonna be as convenient, right? So here, my zero is not one, two, three, four, it doesn't come out. So this comes out to something like one, two, 1 1.25 or something, right? So my numbers don't come out nice and clean, but by the time I do all of my process, I'm gonna get back to A and it's still gonna be two. Thank you. Okay, so that was bilinear interpolation. You'll, you'll see it again on your homework. 
Um, so now we come to another question. Oh, maybe I should see whether there's more people want to ask any more questions about this bilinear translation. Yeah, the answer was two. More questions? Type it or ask it again. If you search the word bilinear interpolation online, you'll find lots of things, including a Wikipedia article. As to why it was two, go back afterwards and watch the video that I just tried to explain it. I don't, I don't know if I can try to do it better. Okay, let's move on and look at another kind of interpolation. Hey, what time does this class end? Who knows the answer? Is it 3.05? 315, 320? Oh, is that right? You guys gave me a lot of answers. Okay, the majority answer is 305. We're gonna aim for that. Um, okay, <laughs> three something, yeah, that's what I knew. The, um, okay, so if I do bilinear interpolation, it works with these four points, but what I told you is we have triangles. Now, how am I gonna deal with a triangle? It doesn't work cleanly. What I need to find is some weighted average of the three points surrounding it, right? So this is our problem for a triangle. We have the, the colors, say, at the three vertices. Um, we know that our graphics card is gonna interpolate for us before it calls our fracking shader. So you know, we have to find this color at X. So we're gonna use something called barycentric coordinates and barycentric interpolation. So I'm gonna talk about a couple of different ways to think about it. They all calculate the same thing. So one thing is we can establish a non-orthogonal basis. So we have this vector and we have this vector. And so this establishes a coordinate system. And now we can use this coordinate system in order to figure out um, what's going on. What we want in the end, but I think there's a little bit harder way to, to think about it. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you another way which is easier to calculate. But some people will like thinking about this basis set. This color X, though, is going to be some weighting value of A plus some weighting value of B plus some weighting value of C, um, right, where these are the weights, alpha, beta, gamma. And we want to make those to be proportional to the distance uh, from, these, from these different things, or the height, right? So intuitively, this is kind of like what we were doing with our other interpolation. We were trying to be proportional to our distance to, to things. So I think the easiest way to actually go calculate this though is to use the areas of the triangles. So we can calculate the area of this triangle, a, a area, area of A, right, here, and that's gonna be the weight on alpha, and alpha is the one that's going to A. So as we get our point far away from A, this triangle is gonna get small and it's gonna get zero weight. Uh, conversely, if this point got close, this triangle will get big and we'll give most of our weight to A. So now all we have to do is take our point and we can take our vectors from our vertices to whichever point we're calculating, calculate a bunch of vectors, and then get the areas of these triangles. And we want to normalize by the area of the whole triangle. And that's going to give us three weighting factor, three weighting values, which always sum up to one, right? They have to sum to one because the percentage weight of this, the percentage weight of this, and percentage weight of this always has to be the, the whole triangle. Okay, so how might we, the only remaining question then is how might we calculate the area of these triangles? So the answer to that is we go back to our cross product. So the cross product of two vectors, the magnitude of the cross product divided by two is the area of a, of a triangle. So this is something you just studied in your linear algebra. Okay. So this is interpolation now on a triangle, this is very centric coordinates. Uh, here's another drawing which might help. Um, it's the same thing drawn another way, right? So we've, we've listed out the formula for linear interpolation. Here's our summation for very centric coordinates. We know what these are, and then here's telling what all these cameras are. Same thing, just said another way, because sometimes a repeat slide helps me. 